Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We are going to today create a very interesting spellings game. There's a random uh, word which will be generated whenever we start our game. Like this A-R-E is a word randomly generated. When we play this again, there will be another word generated randomly. And the boxes of the alphabets will be falling from the sky. We have to go and pick up the boxes in the correct order. So for example, we need to first of all find out W and then the second letter we found, find out is E. So W and E in order we have to go and find out. So there, this is a 3D game and uh, we are doing virtual reality uh, a simple project here which is actually involving selection, navigation and manipulation. So this person which can actually walk so the player is called first person controller or FPS we call it uh, uh, in the shortcut and then this is basically navigation you can navigate around the whole scene and then there is selection so you can select a specific box and we can actually read its the text written on it, on it or whatever the alphabet it represents and we can also pick it up and move ahead so we, we can hold the mouse pick it up and move so that's basically manipulation we can manipulate a certain object in 3d so that's uh, the kind of game we will create today so let me just show you if I need to find H I G H. I can very quickly. I can find it and I can then, you know, my game will be completed. So let me just show you how we create it. So I'm going to start from scratch. There's a new project I just create. It has nothing. There's a lot of code also which we will be writing for this. First of all, I'll remove my main camera because the FPS guy already has his own main camera so I'm going to import a package from the characters and etc so let it complete and I'll get new folder that presents scripts and then prefabs and then materials and then I already have alphabets with me, pictures of alphabets, so which I'm going to just drag into my alphabets folder for bits. I'm going to just drag and drop into my alphabets folder. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'll create 3D object. It's going to be representing cube. It's very small. I'll just resize it a little bit, 1.5, 1.5. 1.5 I'll increase its size by 50% only and um, I will add rigid body to it the rigid body component make sure you go to physics and rigid body and then also I'll name it a okay so the game object I just created is a 3d cube and it's a and I'm gonna Duplicate it, Command D on Mac or, or Control D on Windows 25 times. So I've got total 26 alphabets. And can I advise you, please make sure you keep on saving your work. File save so that you don't leave, uh, lose anything. This is my spelling project, spelling game or random word project, whatever you want to call it. So this is A, this one is B, C, D. I'll pause it and lastly Z now I will go on A and one by one I'll drag and drop this the relevant material from alphabets to the correct and relevant game objects I just created A B C D I'm gonna pause and do this quickly so now I'm gonna press uh, the last one I'll drag the last one E to Z so I've got all these in place and if you just separate them they'll come out uh, just select them you can see they will come out from this one box because we created them all in one place so actually they're all in one place right now um, I will just move them to different location different position if you like it's not necessary to do that all anyway so I'm, I'm just gonna leave that so save scene so what I want to do now is I have prefabs on all of them I've given shape uh, these textures on all of them 
now I want to create their prefab so what I will do is I'll drag and drop a so it becomes a prefab into the prefab folder a b c d I'm gonna pause it again so I do it quickly y and z so I've got all of these as prefabs now with me now it's safe for me to go ahead and delete all of these so I'll just drag and select all of these and delete them because I've got all of these as my prefab so I can reuse them again so just save scene next thing I want to create is a 3d object cube and which will be representing my floor okay so I'll just expand it to 200 on the x side and 200 on the z side and the materials I'll just create a new material now for the folder uh, for the floor floor material is the one I'll call it give it any color you like I'm gonna give it this color so this is my color of the floor and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is since I've imported my FPS I'll just drag and drop this you see now the, the FPS will come here and you can drag and drop it if you see see I can navigate on this floor you see, you see, see the FPS is actually you know, falling down make sure you've actually placed it on the floor you see if it's not on the floor it will fall down whenever you play the game so make sure the FPS is on the floor then once that is done uh, we have to create scripts you see like uh, if I go to prefabs I drag and drop few of my game objects here on the floor in different places you can see the FPS and go and see them and even touch them but the problem is I want to see them I want to touch them and I want to complete the spelling based on them so I'm gonna remove these I H F F etc whatever I just dragged and dropped I want to generate them randomly let's save the scene keep saving your work also the FPS is generally a little slow I like to increase its speed so I'll change this to 10 run to 20 jump speed to 25 okay <clears throat> now the next thing I want to do is to generate re letters randomly so I'll gonna I'll create a new 3d object sorry a new empty object here uh, and I'll call it generate letters and another empty object here which will generate words okay so I'll create corresponding script for generate letters C sharp script generate letters so let's open this generate letters uh, okay now what I want to do basically when I uh, want to start this I want to first of all create an array of game object game object array and I'll call it letters or alphabet whatever you want to call it and uh, as soon as the game starts I want to instantiate uh, it's supposed to be letters letters and first object you see now what happens when I instantiate first object so I will make this public so it is visible on the interface so the generate letters I don't have the script yet let's drag and drop the script yes so it will show me letters if I don't have this public game object letters array I will not see this so I say okay you initialize with three now I'm gonna go to alphabets and I'll give it three alphabets one it should be prefabs sorry yeah make sure you give prefabs not material a b and c and when you play your game you'll see now what happens as soon as it starts it create starts creating a's but where at different places you don't know where they are a somewhere you know just very far from your from your terrain or from your floor so what we want to do we want to do two things we want to just not create only a but we also want to create any randomly any of the letters from between a to z randomly we don't want to specify which one but any of the letters random 
randomly between A to Z. Secondly, we want to place them as soon as they are born, they should be on the floor, not outside anywhere else. So we have to do these two things. So let's give 26 here instead of 3 only. So 26, I'm going to drag and drop from my prefabs A, B, C, D, E. Uh, yeah, this one is E and etc. I'm going to pause and complete this. Oops, what Z should be in the end. Is, it appears I just missed a letter. Z, Y. Okay, so I, I kept in all the alphabets. I, these are not sorted. I missed R, so I placed R here and I put V, W, etc. there. They are not in correct order, but this will work because all 26 items are there in the array. So I have given 26 items to the array. Let's go back to the script. And I say I don't need to instantiate only one because it will instantiate, even if you do it now, it will only instantiate one, the first one, which is A always, which we don't need. You see now they're all A inst being instantiated at different places. So you can see the game, they are instantiated different places and uh, actually from here and they're falling all down so let's stop this and make sure you they fall on top of the terrain and randomly any letter not just a so we'll use random dot range and zero which is the first letter comma 25 which is the last of the 26 if you see the array it starts at element zero and the last one is at 25 so 0 25 randomly it will create anything so now you can see it's f j y etc it's created randomly anything but also we want to create at a certain specific position within a specific range so let's go to floor and see where we are I just play and pause quickly pause pause and let's just go and select any one of these clone which is created so see where it is created it's create well right now it's just you know below the floor I'm gonna just bring it up as long as it is between the X and Z axis which I want to see correctly so bring it a little up yeah it's on top and now let's notice its X and Z axis is why we'll keep it fixed the Y axis so right now it is you see the minimum I want is minus 68 looks like it and the maximum should be the safely should be 72 so I want to just put in a little inside so it's not too far I want to run so it's gonna be minus 40 maybe to plus 40 to make it simple we will do that so I'll say I'll just save a copy of this game object whatever is created game object object is equal to instantiate I got it reference it's reference as soon as it is created and I will change its position object dot transform dot position is equal to new vector 3 and I want to give x y z here but the x y and z value should be random between these ranges so I'll say for x random dot range it should be between minus 40 to plus 40 and that is strictly x axis a random value and why I'm fixing it to let's say 10 because a specific high, height I want I don't want random heights and the z axis I'm actually changing this to also random so let's ch check out the random values which are acceptable let's say this is Let's make it 40 and this is too less. This is minus 40 to, I'm going to call it, it should also be 40 by the way. It should allow me. Okay, let's keep it also minus 40 to 40. Minus 40 to 40. <clears throat> okay, so that's the random range and random letters being created. I'm going to pause this. Let me just write this comment instantiate a random letter place at a random position within the floor so these are the two things I'm doing let's now play it has an error apparently there's a missing comma here 
yep so let's run again there is an error uh, yes this suppose looks like extra should be here let's run this now come on vector, new vector is created no old rule method for random takes zero arguments uh, yeah <laughs> sorry so let's run this should solve it now so now you can see random letters are being created and they are very well within the floor none of them are going outside and as soon as they are born they are within the floor so I can go ahead and select them well see them I can't I'm not yet able to select them next thing I want to do is to have generate a random word and give give it to me what random word I would like to you know spell so let's go to the script and create a new script called generate words and uh, the generate words I have a random string let's say string array string array words okay L just a second okay so what I want to do is I want to create a new string array yeah new string the suggestion was correct many times you want to take the suggestions and now what are those values I'm gonna give values now I'll give all capital letters uh, so because all of my boxes have capital letter textures and the names actually so words let's say small names we'll give small words let's say R I hello yes we can and by the way all of these should be into their own independent inverted commas so we just do that make sure they are commas separated so randomly between all of these and you can actually increase this these this list over here so this is a list of random numbers which will which I want to be created and when as soon as the program starts um, I just a second please as soon as it starts I want to give it some random value I want to create a random value and display on the user screen so let's do this go back I want to display in front of the FPS create object 3d object 3d text and this is the going to be the question so what the users will be creating so let's zoom into this FPS controller is here its camera is actually looking this side to the right side I will place this a little far so it can be seen clearly by the camera as long as it is in the sight of camera we are okay so if it appears very big push it a little more further let's see where it is yes okay appears to be alright I'm just gonna change its color also so color let's say I'm gonna create red so I can see clearly and also its default text is nothing it's not hello world we want yes so another one will be the answer answer is the one which the user will be selecting answer and I will also position it where hello world is uh, where the other text is an answer so this is my answer and I'll change its color to something else let's say bluish so you can see my answer also okay it's a little at the towards the downside I'll push it up anyway so I've got these two three texts that I cre have created 3d text generate words I'll go back to the script and as soon as this starts I'll create a random number and assign it to this question for that I need to have a reference of this question public text mesh question and I'll connect it with the script generate words should have the script generate words oh I don't have the script yet let's just drag and drop on it and it should have this question and it should also have answer by the way public 
text mesh answer so i'll drag and drop answer okay. now when it starts i'll generate a random question uh, random word question dot text and i'll assign to the question text is equal to words zero so word zero will actually give assign it whatever is the first one r so let's see as soon as the question start, the game starts what happens it should get r always it is r which is not what we want also let's remove the answer text we want it whatever the user is selecting so this is our question okay we don't want always r we want it random so let's say random dot range start with zero comma and end with the last one of the array so i'll do words dot length minus one so since it starts with zero it is one the last index is one less than the total quantity the total quantity one two three four five six so the address or the index of the last one is five zero one two three four five okay so if you play this you'll see random question popping up every time you start so it's r again next time it is yes and next time it is hi so our random words is, are coming that's good so let's save this keep saving your work make sure and then I am going to go ahead and create our grab and drop script. So there is one script I will create grab and drop. Grab and drop script. Now in this script the user is going to grab any of these boxes and you know that get selected so what we will do is uh, we will copy and paste the grab and drop script from a, from a previous project which we created uh, grab and drop if you remember this we will copy and paste this So we've got exactly the same code and see at least it should grab and drop so let's move forward a r e we should go ahead but let me just see what object i can can i grab g i should be able to grab g now i'm not then something missing in the code is it so let's see what's missing in the code uh, yeah, I did not drop it anywhere. So you have to drag and drop this on the FPS. This is my grab and drop script. Should be able to grab boxes now of the letters. Let's go ahead and grab the nearest one. When you click on the mouse, it will grab it. So I clip. Okay, it's grabbed and I can move. So this is manipulation. I can manipulate this object in 3D. I can grab and I leave it it just not only drops it it adds some force onto it this was from a previous project we are going to disable that adding force property adding force uh, whenever it is dropped so i'll disable this line so i don't add force on any box when i pick it up so pick up w and as soon as i leave it it's left there x u etc so that's working fine okay let's move forward next thing I want to do is when as soon as this guy the FPS grabs any anything I want to get a reference of what he has grabbed okay so in the grab and drop script what we have to do we have to get a reference for the answer so whenever we are actually grabbing a box we add that to the answer so public uh, text mesh uh, answer we get a reference to the answer now uh, this is an FPS make sure you keep saving your work 
FPS you have to have a reference of the answer because as long as the FPS can grab something or can click on a box we should be able to add that the FPS has actually selected that as an answer so we go to the script and as soon as it has been grabbed what we do is that answer dot text plus equals to add to it the grabbed object dot name or yeah so if we do that you can see what happens so I'll just go ahead and play I see the grabbed object is X it should come as X clone you see the X the name of it is actually X clone W clone so its name is not what I want only the first letter is what I want dot name dot substring zero starts from zero and only give me one letter so I manipulate that string to give me substring so I get only one of these so I can get F I get only the first letter not the whole F clone so as you can see it's F clone I get only the first letter now. and then S etc etc so I can keep on playing I should not be keeping on playing what I should do is I should stop somewhere so you see the word the the script it actually generates the random number it should check that uh, if the question text is actually similar to the answer text so if question dot text is equal to answer dot text then you say congrats uh, answer you, you just change the question text question dot text text is equal to congrats you win else else uh, answer sorry question dot text is equal to you lose so there's a problem in the script and I'll tell you which is the what is the problem let me just show you it will always say you lose because it is not allowing me to select anything first so dot length <coughs> is greater than or equal to answer dot text dot length then we say you lose okay this should work now if it's exactly equal we say congratulations you win if the length are equal and even though they are not equal then we say you lose so let's do that it should not tell me you lose in the beginning so it gives me v so let's go ahead and select two wrong letters it should give me you lose more than two. okay you lose but if i select w and e correctly it should give me let's select a smaller one Maybe to do is what I want to hit at. Still, hello. R. Okay, let's find out R. So that's my A. A, and then let's find out R now. That's my R. R. And then I want to find out E. That's my E. not E let's go and see E so congratulations you win okay so that's it thank you very much for watching this I hope you enjoyed we have just connected on the generate words question and answer on the generate letters we have con connected all the 26 letters on FPS we have connected <coughs> answer thank you very much for watching